Welcome to this brief video detailing the Certified Actuarial Analyst exam process. I'm John Lee, one of the tutors from BPP Actuarial Education, or BPP ACTEC for short, and in this video I'll be outlining the syllabus, the exams, and the process of qualifying. At the end of this presentation, there will be links to follow up videos for those who want more details on the comparison between the CAA and the fellowship exams or further details on the support available. To qualify as a certified actuarial analyst, we're required taking seven exams. Module zero, the entry exam. Modules one to five, covering the core knowledge you need to understand the office work you'll undertake. An online professional awareness test, OPAT for short, covering the actuaries code. And finally, in order to become qualified, students will need a minimum of one year of relevant work experience supported by a completed learning log. I'm going to chat through the contents of each of these in turn. Should you wish to skip to one particular exam, then please use the links on the screen now. Module 0 is the entry exam. You'll need to pass this before you can join the IFOA as a student actuarial analyst and then proceed to take the other exams. The aim of Module 0 is to ensure that the applicants for the Certified Actuarial Analyst qualification have a solid grounding in the mathematics and basic statistics that underpin actuarial work. It's a two-hour exam plus 15 minutes of admin time, administered by Pearson View, consisting of 65 multi-choice questions. You will need between 125 to 150 hours of study before you'll be ready to sit this exam. The syllabus is based on our Foundation Actuarial course and Stats Pack, and it covers five topic areas. Numerical methods, which includes percentages, errors, iteration, interpolation, vectors and matrices. Mathematical constants and standard functions, which covers the definitions, properties and graphs of polynomial, exponential and log functions. Algebra, which includes solving linear, quadratic and simultaneous equations as well as summing arithmetic and geometric series. Calculus, which includes differentiating polynomial, exponential and logarithmic functions using a function of a function, the product and the quotient rules as necessary. It also covers the use of derivatives to find and identify stationary points and partial derivatives of functions of two variables. Finally, it covers integration both by inspection, by parts and by substitution. And the final topic covers probability and statistics, which includes statistical diagrams, measures of location spread and skewness, probability, including Bayes' theorem, and discrete and continuous random variables. Module 1 is finance and financial mathematics. Again, this is tested by a two-hour exam plus 15 minutes of admin time, administered by Pearson View, and consists of 65 multi-choice questions. It is recommended that you spend between 125 to 150 hours of study before you are ready to sit the exam. The syllabus covers eight topic areas. The key principles of finance, such as agency theory and maximizing shareholder wealth. Cash flow models of standard investments, such as bonds, shares and annuities. The time value of money, working with simple, compound and convertible interest rates to calculate accumulations and current values of single cash flows or annuities. Loan repayments, calculating the payments under these loans and the interest charged. Project appraisal, for example, determining whether a project should proceed by calculating the net present value of its cash flows. And also calculating the returns achieved by fund managers on their investments. Investment and risk characteristics of assets such as bonds, shares and derivatives. Elementary compound interest problems assuming a tax-free investor where we will calculate the price or the return earned on bonds, equities or property. And finally the term structure of interest rates which describes why interest rates change with term and calculating appropriate rates to describe this. Module 2 covers statistics and models. Again, it's a two-hour exam, plus 15 minutes of admin time, administered by Pearson Vu, consisting of 65 multi-choice questions. Again, it's recommended 125 to 150 hours of study before you'll be ready to sit the exam. 
This is the largest syllabus of all the modules and covers 13 topic areas. The main features are principal discrete and continuous distributions, for example the binomial and normal distributions. You should be able to define and apply these distributions. Moment generating functions, cumulant generating functions and their uses to evaluate moments. The concepts of independence, jointly distributed random variables and conditional distributions and the use of generating functions to establish the distribution of linear combinations of independent random variables. The central limit theorem and the concepts of random sampling, statistical inference and the sampling distribution. For example, using the distributions of sample means and sample variances to find probabilities. Estimation. You will both describe and apply the method of moments and maximum likelihood to estimate an unknown parameter. You'll also define and calculate the properties of estimators and use these properties to decide between them. Confidence intervals for unknown parameters. You'll be calculating these for both one and two samples. Testing hypothesis where you'll apply basic tests for one and two sample situations including a chi-square goodness of fit. Analyzing the linear relationships between variables using correlation analysis and regression analysis. You'll be defining, calculating and interpreting the coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination and using a simple linear model to predict values. The principles of actuarial modelling where you'll describe the use of deterministic and stochastic models. Defining and giving examples of stochastic processes and using simple stochastic interest rate models to find the mean and variance of an accumulated sum. Markov chain processes, well you'll use them to calculate stationary distributions in simple cases, including experience rating models such as no claims discount. The Markov jump process, where you'll state the features and define models for simple cases such as the two-state survival model. And finally, the random lifetime survival model. You'll both define this and the symbols used to calculate probabilities of survival and the mean future lifetime of an individual. Module 3 covers long-term actuarial mathematics, which cover the techniques used to model and value cash flows dependent on death, survival and other uncertain risks arising in pensions and life insurance. Again, it's a two-hour exam plus 15 minutes of admin time, administered by Pearson Vu and consists of 65 multi-choice questions. Again, it's recommended 125 to 150 hours of study before you'll be ready to sit the exam. The syllabus covers nine topic areas. Simple assurance and annuity contracts, where you'll define these contracts, their actuarial symbols, and obtain expressions for the mean and variance of the present value of the payments under these contracts. Evaluating the expected values of the contracts in topic one by using life functions given in the tables. Describing gross premiums, reserves and expenses incurred on insurance contracts and calculating these gross premiums for life insurance and annuity contracts. Gross premium reserves, where you'll state why reserves are held and you'll calculate them. Calculating gross premiums and gross premium reserves for increasing and decreasing benefits, as well as annuities using select or ultimate mortality. You'll then repeat the above for functions involving two lives, such as the death or survival of either or both of two lives. Modeling cash flows contingent on risks, such as the multiple state Markov model or multiple decrement model. Techniques for discounting emerging costs for use in pricing, reserving and assessing profitability. You'll be expected to evaluate cash flows and apply a profit test to simple contracts. And finally, the principal forms of heterogeneity within a population and the ways in which selection can occur. And hence, you'll be explaining why different life tables are used. Module 4 covers short-term actuarial mathematics, which provides a grounding in the mathematical and statistical techniques of particular relevance to non-life insurance. Again, it's a two-hour exam plus 15 minutes of admin time, administered by Pearson Vu, and consists of 65 multi-choice questions. 
Again, it's recommended 125 to 150 hours of study before you'll be ready to sit the exam. The syllabus only covers four topic areas. Probabilities and moments of loss distributions, i.e. distributions used to model losses or claims in non-life insurance, both with and without limits and risk sharing arrangements, i.e. reinsurance. Risk models involving frequency and severity distributions, where you'll be defining these models and then calculating the mean, the variance and the MGFs, both with and without reinsurance. Ruin, where you'll define and use a simple model of the insurer's cash flows to determine the probability of ruin, and then use Lumberg's inequality to obtain an upper bound on the probability of ruin in cases both with and without reinsurance. And finally, techniques for analysing a runoff or delay triangle and projecting the ultimate position. You'll need to apply four different methods to calculate the reserves held by non-life insurers and state the assumptions underlying each method. Module 5 covers models and audit trails. This module can only be sat once modules 0 to 4 have been passed. It's tested by a three-hour online exam plus 15 minutes of admin time. It's recommended that you spend about 100 hours of study before you'll be ready to sit this exam. The syllabus covers two topic areas. The development of a spreadsheet model to solve a specified problem. You'll be summarising data using appropriate descriptive statistics and graphical representation and then performing checks on the data and results. This will be carried out on Excel and it is expected that students can use functions such as average, sum if and VLOOKUP. Secondly, you'll be producing an audit trail for use by a fellow CAA student, documenting the parameters given in the scenario, the methods used in your model, and the checks made on the data and the results. This can either be within the Excel spreadsheet itself or in a separate Word document. The online professional awareness test ensures that new entrants to the IFOA have a robust understanding of the actuary's code as well as the obligations to which the code binds you as a member of a professional body. This exam must be sat and passed at any time within one full year of joining as a student actuarial analyst. It's a one and a half hour online exam and it's recommended that you'll need between one and five hours of study before you'll be ready. The exam consists of five three-part questions covering each of the five core principles of the actuary's code. Integrity, competence and care, impartiality, compliance, and open communication. The questions will test your ability to exercise judgment in compromising ethical situations, including those where you may need to seek advice from senior colleagues. Finally, in order to qualify as a certified actuarial analyst, you'll need to demonstrate that you've obtained a minimum of one year of relevant practical work experience. This will require that you appoint a supervisor within your place of work who will meet with you at least once every six months. You will need to record your experience in a learning log in order to demonstrate that you have acquired skills in three areas. The technical application of your actuarial skills, such as validating and analyzing data, professional and ethical skills using the standards detailed in the actuary's code, and communication skills by communicating in writing to a range of audiences. The log will require both you and your supervisor's assessment of the skills you have addressed. In addition, you will include a record of all training events you have attended and demonstrate that you have completed a minimum of 10 hours of formal learning outside of studying for the exams. The final sign-off of your learning log must be by a fellow of an international actuarial association. If you don't have one within your company, then you can contact the education team at the IFOA. BPP Acted has been training actuarial students for over 25 years and employs the most experienced team of actuarial educators anywhere in the world. We've worked closely with the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries to create comprehensive study support packages for CAA students, whatever their budget. The bronze package offers a bespoke textbook. The silver package builds on this by adding multi-choice online tests and practice exams. And finally, the gold package adds online tuition and tutor support for all your queries.
If you stumble through this video and have no idea what's going on, then a link to the overview video is given below. Along with a link for a video for the comparison between the CAA and the fellowship exams, and a video on the further study support available. Alternatively, you can visit the profession's website by using the link at the bottom of the page, or our website at bppacted.com. Thanks for watching.